you, God. Good morning. Good morning. And we do need to always. 
just be mindful that we want the spirit of the living God to be with us wherever we go. Yes, God. We can't do anything, nothing, no thing without him. Amen. 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 So we just want to um, be begin with praise and worship today. We want to have our worship team come up so that we can just continue the frame of praise and worship today. That we will continue to speak to the Lord and charge the atmosphere with his presence and with his power. Amen. 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 We invite you all to stand with us. We invite you all to join us as we worship our God. Amen. Because we're doing what we create, we're we're created to do. Amen. Amen. And how many understand that the Lord is our strength? He's the source of our life, the strength of our life. Yes. Right? Yes. And so we need to pull on the source. If you're feeling a little bit shaky, if you're feeling a little bit weak, if you're feeling a little bit off, if you're feeling a little bit tired, if you're feeling a little bit sad, if you're feeling a little bit confused, if you're feeling a little bit angry, if you're feeling a little bit disheveled, pull on the source. Hallelujah. Open up the name of the Lord. Or call, open up your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Because when we call upon the name of the Lord, everything that you have Wow. 
because we don't give free um, reign to the one who lives on the inside. The Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. Yes. And because we were created to worship and to praise God, it is in us. It is hardwired into us. Yes. It is spiritually yes. wired into yes. us yes. to praise and to worship God, to speak well of him, to call upon his name, yes. and to lift up his name and to glorify his name. And that's why the enemy always works against that. Because he knows that when that happens, the atmosphere has got to line up with the power of the words that we speak. He'll let us mumble and grumble and complain all day and all night. He's okay when we're doing that. But when we start to say hallelujah anyhow, when we start to say God, I bless you anyhow, when, it, when, when your circumstances are a little bit shaky and you say, you know, I'm victorious anyhow, he doesn't like that, you know? But that is where we have to know that we can trust, have faith, and believe. Amen. Amen. Trust, have faith, and believe. So we work our faith muscles by opening up our mouths. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We thank God for all of you who are here this morning. We bless your name, God. We honor you. And so we want to do our mission statement. We are contemporary, but not compromised. We experience and envision a diverse, multicultural worshiping community of spiritually mature believers, leading others into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, producing healthy families, engaged in holistic ministries, developing community spiritually and economically, and impacting the world for the glory of God. And we say, and we always say, don't give up, don't ever give up, you can. Amen. Because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen? Amen. 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 And so we don't just say it because it sounds good. We don't just say it because, you know, it's just a, 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 a cliche. We say it because it is the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so we're going to prepare for the word. We just want to, um, before we do that, there are a few things I wanted to just remind everyone of. Um, we do have in the back row receptacle for our tithes and offerings. So if you want to offer your tithes and offering unto the Lord to honor Him in your giving, it's here to my rear. If you need an um, envelope, just lift up your hand so that someone can bring you an envelope. And I did grab my hand. And then also, um, we have some birthdays that we want to recognize. So at this time, the sister Joy can come up and recognize our birthdays. Good morning. Good morning. Bless the name of the Lord. It's good to see each and every one of you. Amen. Thank you. Well, our very own pastor, Apostle Frank Jr.'s birthday. Let's just give God honor and praise for the word of passion comes to 
short to share the word of God with us. Amen. 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 I encourage you to believe in his support. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning. Good morning, each and everybody. Let's give God a hand praise this morning. Wow, wow. Thank you for the birthday, which sometimes we get so caught up. I wouldn't even thinking about my birthday. I'm looking like, whose birthday is it this week? I'm just sitting there waiting for somebody to come up. And um, so it's uh, it's a Saturday coming up. Uh, 24. 24. Yeah. So thank God for another year. Uh, the very next year, I'll be going into a whole other decade. So um, I'm so happy for that. Um, to start today, I want to start out with some acknowledgments, and I always like to uh, boost and, 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 and pump up those of us who are doing well uh, in whatever spectrum. You know, um, I love athletics, but it can be academics, it can be dance, it can be music or whatever. So today I want to acknowledge uh, America's next top model. Uh, this person has received a trophy for a runway model. Who got next? 2022. So, Mr. Cameron, come on up. America's next top model. Mr. Cam. Congratulations. Not only is he a, a worshiper, and if you're at home, you can hear him literally in the camera singing every song. I mean, young man who, who is born to be a worshiper, who was a worshiper from the womb. I'm taking a little bit of time because I, I know that I'm not going to be before you long today. Uh, when I tell you or admonish each and every one of you, not just our ministers, but and our, our deacons and our evangelists, to always have a word in your pocket. Always, and y'all hear me say this, always, I always got a sermon in my pocket because you got to be able to minister to people on the spot. You can't wait. Well, wait till Sunday and Pastor God. You have to have a word. So, uh, give you a backdrop very quickly. Um, this month has five Sunday, no four, actually four. But for some reason, I got off, and I didn't think that I was going to have to preach until a while. And me and Minister Mel was talking about New Sunday last week, and she said, "No, since it's only the third week, you know, you're preaching next week." <laughs> and I said, "Oh, are you sure?" She said, "Yeah." And I looked at the calendar, and sure enough, and so. And, and on top of that, yesterday, I left my house at 6 o'clock in the morning, didn't get back until 11 o'clock last night, went up to Rhode Island to support Zechariah, and I'm going to tell you all what University of Delaware kicked butt, they kicked Rhode Island's butt, and it was supposed to be a good game, but I was on the road for, for quite a bit of the time, uh, but I put something together on late Thursday, and said, God, just do it, and I say that to say this. You want to make sure that you always have a word because whatever word that God gives you will always be on time. So you think about, well, God, is this, well, is this the right word? Is, you know, I just put this together and, you know, you gave me this, so I put some stuff down on paper. But when I got here this morning, I knew it was the word. You know, you question yourself, well, God, are you sure this week? Man? So when I got here, I knew it was the word because I also want to make an acknowledgement one of our very own Deacon Dean Portier is about ready to leave and, and go to Florida. New beginnings, new beginnings, new beginnings. Perfect Will Ministries, some are sad. And I saw some people here crying today. And we, we're still not sure what he's going to do. He's not sure. But I wanted to make sure, and God, only God can do this. Only God can do this. This is in, this is my sermon notes for today, and I'm going to dedicate take this sermon to you because I don't know if I'll see you again after today. I really don't know. And how awesome is would God give me this out of all things to preach today? Wow. But remember, don't be sad. Let not your heart be troubled, and this ain't got nothing to do about death. But Perfect World Ministries, our, our vision is to win, to build, and to save. And it's to win the church and, as well as the unchurch. So this man of God came to us at Perfect Will about 11 years ago with a great foundation. He knew the word. He knows the word. But it was our job, Pastor Tacey and I, and all of us at Perfect Will, he was already one who knew Christ, but she just built him up in the most holy faith. 
And just like in high school, like I always give y'all that thing, especially guys, y'all know, y'all go through four years of high school, and then it's one girl that you never talked to, and the last four months you get to meet her. And then it's time to go. And then you be like, yo, is it time? That's how I feel about this dude. I'm telling you. This dude, it's been 11 years, but man, I'm telling you, y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand my relationship with this man of God, this deacon. This man of God covers me as well as I am his covering. He covers me with little things. Like he said something to me today. And I was, uh, thanks, thanks, Dick. <laughs> Good look. But he's always looking out for somebody else. Yes, he is. Yes. Yes, he is. And so, Dick, I, I, I take this prayerfully brief teaching today, and, and I'm just going to give you everything I got. And think it's not strange that I'm going to be preaching from a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, his son. Amen. You're a spiritual son to me. Yes. And when Apostle Paul wrote this letter to Timothy, he wasn't sure that he'd ever get to see Timothy again. And the fact of the matter is when you break down the text, he never did see him again. So in this letter, 2 Timothy, that the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, he gave him everything he had. Today I'm going to give you everything I got. Fresh off of the road, tired as only you want to whatever say, but I'm going I'm to I'm call on God to give me the reserve, the strength. The, one more game, God. One more game. For this mighty man of God. Let's give God a hand of praise. Father, the name of Jesus, we ask right now, God, that you would just bless us. And while this is a solemn occasion, God, and, and sometimes we feel like we're losing a brother, but Florida is gaining a mighty man, God. Amen. Amen. And so we ask right now, God, whatever your plan is for this mighty man of God's life, we plead the blood of Jesus over him. We ask that you would cover him. We ask that you was using for your glory. And God, we are reminded of your word. Who can know the mind of God? You take the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Who knows? God, listen, we, we not praying one way or the other. You know the way. If you're chosen for him to stay, then allow him to stay. If you call him to go, then allow him to go with might and power and your spirit. So we thank you, God, on this day. We thank you for the word that has been prepared in advance, way before we even knew of this. Allow me to hide behind the sacred desk and use this word for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I started out this word on Thursday based on just my experience and where I am right now. And I started to think about inheritance started to think about the things that God has allowed me to speak into uh, the University of Delaware team as a chaplain. One of the words I told y'all a couple weeks ago was exquisite, right? So God said, okay, take exquisite and inheritance and put those together. So if you want a sermon topic for the day, it's exquisite inheritance. And as I began to write down some notes, God said, just reflect on the things and in your life because last week I was a little bit weepy and, and I started to reflect on and I kind of told y'all on the 53 years that I lived at 414 West 39th Street and the memories and the culmination of selling and closing on the house. And so as I reflected, I remember that Mom June, that when I grew up in, on 414 West 39th Street, I remember that again, we come from very humble beginnings, just looking for that and then and north side of Wilmington. And I remember that mom and dad didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have a lot of money growing up. Yet we never felt like we were broke. I didn't feel like we didn't have whatever we needed. I felt like I always had what I needed. I remember my dad, uh, Kramer, as an athlete, my dad, I, he didn't make a lot of money. But dude, I always had the best. My dad was buying me $100 gloves when I was in the eighth grade, and my mom was like, are you crazy? I always had the best. I had the best cleats. I had the best bike. 
I asked my dad whatever, whatever, whatever he could do, it was the best. And so, you know, that, that was transcended down with my kids. I always gave them the best. Somebody said, well, you know, said, are you over the top? No, this is the way that I was taught. If I'm going to give you something, I'm going to give you my best. And if I'm capable and God gives me the means, I'm going to give you my best. So, and I remember, I started to think about it. And every time somebody, Pastor takes a few of this, even when we were dating, every time somebody stopped by our house, even our family, when we became adults and we got married and we had children, every time and we always went through the back door, every time we went through the back door, before you could sit down good at that orange table that was in the kitchen, mom was already rustling up some grub. You didn't have to say a word, just step in and she would just automatically start cooking you something. She, I mean, it was just you walk in the house and she just start cooking. If it was a hot sausage in the freezer, she cook it. She cook some hot sausage and some eggs and, and some pancakes and she said, what you want? And you like, huh? It didn't matter who you were, friend, stranger, family. You knew when you walked through 414, my kids knew that every time they went, they were going to get a grow. No matter what it was, so she'd pull out hot sausages, she'd pull out some ice cream out the freezer, and she'd pull out, she always had some snacks in the cupboard. You, know, you always had something in the cupboard that you could eat, and, and God said, reflect on those things. But to every woman, to every man, to every person, to every friend, to every stranger that came through those doors, each meal, whether it was big or small, was always filled with love. And my mom always made sure, deep, that we understood that everything that we received from that house, even including the meal, was as a direct result of the gift that Jesus Christ gave us. She didn't always have it, but she always had it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like she would go out and buy stuff and be like, why are you buying it? It didn't matter if it was a whole clan of people that came. She always fed them, what I'm saying to you, it was a part of our legacy. And some get this twisted because they use legacy and inheritance intertwined, but they're not the same thing. Deep, deep dirty, I got one. Deep say, come on. So let's talk about inheritance. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm talking to you today about exquisite inheritance. Look at your neighbor and say, what is inheritance? What is inheritance? Inheritance, the dictionary definition of inheritance says that it is a thing that's inherited. Well, if, if you were like me and y'all went to college, your professor said you can define a word with the word. So let me define inherit. Inherit means to receive money, property, or some type of title as an heir at the death of a previous owner. Now, did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. So that's inheritance. So I want y'all to put that in your pocket, and I want to take a text today, 2 Timothy, chapter one, verses three, verse seven, and this is the letter that the apostle Paul wrote to Timothy while he was in a Roman prison in a basement at this time, and it's around AD 64 or through AD 66. He's about to die. And he knows he's about to die. And it's cold. And he, it's not like when he first started when he had a couple visitors that could come, but now the only person that really comes to visit him now is Luke. Right? On a consistent basis. And he knows that he's about to die, but he's getting reports from the people back in the Holy Land that his protege, Timmy, is becoming kind of cold. Cold meaning is like he doesn't have that vigor. He doesn't have that fervor. He's kind of like falling back from the gospel. So this letter is an attempt to get him to rekindle the thing, the very thing that God placed in him. So I'm going to read 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 through 7, and I'm going to be reading from the Message Bible, so it might be a little bit different. And it reads, verse number 3, 2 Timothy chapter 1, 
Every time I say your name in prayer, which is practically all the time, I thank God for you. And the God that I worship my whole life in the tradition of my ancestors, I miss you a lot. Especially Deacon Dean. I remember the tearful goodbye. If I never see you again after today, I remember the tearful events that took place today before service even started. I'll remember the pictures that you took before we even start. I remember the tearful goodbye. But you know what? I look forward to the joy pack reunion. Because we're going to see each other again. And I ain't talking about up in glory. If I got to come to Florida, we're going to see each other again. Because you know I will travel. Right? So I look forward to that. The Apostle Paul went on to say, as I'm thinking about these mem memories, Timothy, as I'm thinking about these memories, Deacon Dean, that precious memory that I just wrote about, it triggers another. Your honest faith and what a rich faith it is. What a rich faith that you have, Deacon. It's handed down from your grandmother, Lois. Right? And to your mother, Eunice. And now, to you. So that special gift, that special anointing that you have is handed down to you from your family. Your physical family. And now your spiritual family from myself to Pastor Tacy, to Perfect Will Ministries, to you. I want you to remember the gift. I want you to remember the 11 years. I want you to remember the hard times. And then I want you to remember the times when you return. And I want you to remember the time when God uh, assigned us to build you back up in the faith. I want you to remember those days and those words that you spoke to us as pastors, but also the entire congregation. Well, I don't know if I hear from God. Well, you hear from God now, and I, I know you hear from God. So Timothy, uh, Paul is telling Timothy, I need you to just stop and reflect on these things. And then he says, but most of all, I want you to remember the special gift of ministry that you received. Timothy, and I'm speaking to you now, Deacon Dean, I want you to remember the special gift of ministry that you received when we laid hands on you and we prayed that you keep that fire that's on the inside of you ablaze. Paul is telling Timothy, listen, I'm hearing that you're losing your vigor and I need you to get that fire back. And I may never see you again, but this letter will serve as my intent for you to remember. So, that's the text. And I'll tell you this, and I'll tell each and every one of you this, and every one of you watching, that God doesn't want us to be shy with our gifts. God has given you a gift. You don't got to be the loudest person in the book, in the world. You don't got to be the person that's out, all, out front, but man, I'm going to try to be bold Amen. with the gift that God gave you. But be bold, be loving, and be sensible is what it says in the message. So may God add a blessing to the reading of the word. In the text, again, the Apostle Paul is in a Roman prison. He's about to die. He writes his letter to a spiritual son, and he's encouraging Timothy to be bold in the gifts that God gave him. And as we, as we look at this, we, we got to think about this. Remember what he said about his grandmother and his mother, right? Well, one of the problems was, and this is now I'm speaking to the congregation. One of the problems was, we saw this in Colossians and we saw this in Galatians. And the scriptures tell us, the, uh, uh, Timothy's dad was Greek, right? So he's part Greek and he was part uh, 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 Hebrew, right? So his grandmother and his mother knew the way. But his dad introduced him to Gnosticism and idols and, and all this kind of stuff. But his mom and his grandmother were strong in the faith. So he learned the way from those two. 
But Paul, now being close to death, he's a little bit concerned. Timothy again has become timid concerning the gospel, but but but, but why? And, and, and scholars have speculated a few theories. One theory is that Paul was unsure if Timothy was uh, ashamed of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and remember, when Christ was, was, was crucified, all the saints got scared, the biggest part, they, they ran. And they wasn't sure if it was, it, it was starting to wear on Timothy, that Christ wasn't uh, around to lead them any, anymore. Paul also may not have been sure if Timothy was embarrassed that his leader was in jail. Now this is why I tell you don't set people up on a pedestal. Because if you set people up on a pedestal, what happens if the person that you're following has a, has a fall? Then what you going to do? Do you fall as well? Do you put all your eggs in one basket and say, oh, I was following pastors and them, and now, <clears throat> and it almost happened. That fool yesterday was up there in the game and they just Gary start fighting and he on the news. And he in jail now. It can happen. Sure. So, so, so Paul was trying to figure out, were you mad that Christ was gone? Were you ashamed that I was in jail? And or, was it the simple fact that you, Timothy, a young man, did you start to believe that you were too young to carry such a prolific assignment? See, some of y'all got some weight on y'all shoulders that God has given you to do. <clears throat> and you get to a certain point where you started out on fire. When you got on a day, you said, yes, God, yes, God. And I'm looking at three, four people <clears throat> in here who got on a day or license. And as I look at you, one came under attack this past week. Another one said he's coming under attack this week. Another one I know has come under attack. See, you don't understand when you put your hand to the plow, you're not fit for the kingdom if you look back and you turn back. So he didn't say it was going to be easy. See, you got ordained and you got license. He said, that's it. I'm going to take two, two, two. No, you ain't. That attack came right behind you, didn't it? My only woman watchman, she not only got her thing, she got elevated as a watchman and then that attack came strong last week. So I need you to understand, as Paul was writing to Timothy, I need you to understand, Timothy, yeah, you are the man for the job, but it ain't going to be easy. Whether you stay here or leave, the assignment on your life is crucial. And I need you to be bold. I need you, and, and Timothy, I'm, I'm, Timothy was much like you, did He wasn't the loudest dude. He didn't go around taunting stuff. He just got to see was smooth. Timothy was smooth with it. He was. But Timothy was powerful. Once he got his sea legs under, once he read his letter, once he saw his, his spiritual daddy had some, 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 some investment in him. So Paul encourages Timothy. He says, listen, and this is what I need you to do. If you don't remember anything about this day, if you don't even remember this, the, the, the text exactly, I want you to remember these words. Paul encouraged Timothy to fan the flames of faith. So what does that somebody, the pastor, and, 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 and uh, sit there, we got it. What does that mean, young people? If you ever had a fireplace, I know we we have a fireplace that we moved out here, but when you got a fireplace, the embers get kind of, they start dying out. But if you just go up and start fanning them, all of a sudden they get reignited. All of a sudden the spark goes and the flame comes back. So I need you to fan the flames of faith. Stir it up. And the Holy Spirit that resides on the inside of you, don't ever let it become complacent. Don't ever let it dim out. Don't ever see if you if you if, if you if you have a fire placed in your house, you don't just light a fire and walk away and just let it burn. You gotta do some work. 
You gotta turn that bad boy. You gotta make sure that's even when it starts burning. And you gotta make sure that you fan those flames. So I want you to fan the flames that's on the inside of you. Amen. And then Paul, and I challenge you with this, and I already said it, he challenges Timothy whenever you get down, whenever you get depleted, whenever you question God, I need you to go back and I need you to reflect on the day that you were ordained when we laid hands on you at this very altar. And the feeling that you felt as your family was here and all of your supporters from Perfect Will was here and the commitment that you made to God, I want you to never let it dissipate from your life. The Bible says, in one of my favorite scriptures, y'all hear me saying it a lot, you know, there are going to be times when you want to go out there and you want to do whatever you need to do and you're doing it for God and nobody wants to hear you and it seems like you're not hearing from God and it seems like God is not talking to you and you can't get a word from God and you're praying and you say, and the devil say, what, what's the use? In Isaiah chapter 54 verse 7, it says, for a brief moment. God says this to Isaiah, in a brief, for a brief moment I abandon you, but I'm going to bring you back wow. with such fervor. So you've got to hold on and you've got to believe that God is who he says he is. Come on. Come on. Let me break this down and get out of your way. I just, I just want this letter to be an encouragement to you today. Uh, Let's talk about inheritance very quickly. And this is what God had given me on Thursday way before I even knew I was going to talk to you. Uh, uh, Deacon Dean, give him this. Today's text again. I'm talking about exquisite inheritance, and I'm talking about the the the, the, the uh, example that Lois and Eunice passed down to them. Timothy, watch this. An inheritance. An inheritance. Here, give me some keys for you. Write these notes. What is an inheritance? I told you what the definition. But let me tell you what it contains. Inheritance contains vision and foresight. Without a vision, the people perish. You gotta have a vision. You gotta know where you're going. To win, to build, and to sin is what God gave us in this ministry. Amen. You gotta have some foresight. You gotta know that there's gonna be some people that you need to speak into, that you need to sow into, that you need to build up, that you need to replenish. You gotta have foresight. Number one, vision and foresight. Yeah. Number two, once you have your vision and your foresight, well then you got to execute. Execution. You can't just put a vision down on the paper and just leave it and say, you, you, you listen, you can't throw a seed down on the ground and say, seed grow. Yeah. Yeah. You got to water it. You got to till it. You got to tend to that seed. So you have to have execution. You got to do something to leave something. And the third thing once you have the vision and once you have the foresight and once you have the execution, then comes contentment. Paul sold it to Timothy something rich. And at the end of his life in this letter, somewhere along the lines of this letter, he told Timothy these words. And I've preached this before. He said, do thy diligence to come to me before winter. In other words, he was content. He knew he was about to die. He said, I need you to get here before winter because y'all are going to be for the history of all this. If you're out in where they were to go from the Holy Land to, 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 to Rome, you had to go across the Mediterranean Sea. And in the wintertime, you became frozen. You couldn't travel. I need you to get here. I'm losing my sight. It's cold. Bring me blankets. Bring me parchment paper. But I need, I need to see you. And scholars say he never did get there. He never got to see him again. So with this, with this contentment, how does that work in, in my life? My mom sold it to my sister and I. She taught us the way. She kept us in church. She always got us back on the right track. And then when we got older, my woman is an all my, my sister is an awesome woman of God, very involved in her church, part of the leadership team, part of the choir. Part of doing a lot of things with her church and, 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 and this little crazy knucklehead of, uh, of yours as an apostle actually going out preaching the word. So my mama did what she was supposed to do. Did y'all hear me say perfect? Nah. I ain't never said perfect. She did some other stuff too. 
But she laid down an inheritance for us. Because what did I say? Vision, foresight, execution. She had vision and foresight for us. She had execution. But at the end, her words were, I'm tired. I'm ready to go home. That's the contentment. The contentment I have with you. Oh my God. The vision, the foresight, the execution, the, 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 the intimate times that we just spent together, going out to eat and just spending time together. And I don't know, I don't, I don't get people. Yeah, I don't get people. Because I remember Dee coming back and saying, well, my family is tripping because they say, you can call your pastor. And he answers. Yeah. And they were saying, you. You go to Red Lobster with you? He goes out to eat with you? Uh -huh. I don't get people. That's just the type of person that I am. Yeah. Right? So all of those times and all of those days well spent and all of the things that we've been through together, all of us, me, you, and Pastor, I reflect on those days, but as you prepare to leave or not leave, we're content. I'm content in sending you. Because I know you're prepared. Somebody said... You took this dude through all these months of training wow. to ordain him. Wow. And it's less than a month he leaves him. Wow. That don't change, that don't change what God decided that God gave me. Come on, come on. That don't, oh, oh, you know what? Oh, you leave. And listen, we found I found out probably midway that he was preparing to leave because he told me. So let me talk to you other real quick. Talk to y'all about church politics. See, when you want to write play page and you're not insecure, uh -huh. you can talk to your people about these things. He can feel safe because of the relationship that I have with him to say, Pastor, I don't know if I'm going to be here. You sure? And at that point, and I've been in some church, oh, oh uh, brother, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm not here. We're discontinuing the training. Yeah. Well, I didn't ordain, we didn't ordain him because he was going to be part of Perfect Will Ministries, and you, now you better stay locked in. No, because how many times have I told y'all, y'all not ours anyway. Y'all, y'all never, y'all, I promise y'all, if y'all heard me say it, y'all need to smack me. Y'all never hear me say my church. Well, my church is doing this, and my, y'all not my, y'all not my people, and this is not my church. This is our church, and God needs it. So again, I'm content in sending you because I know you are great. Yeah. I know you, man, more equipped than ever. Boy, because you got vision, you got foresight, you got confidence, you on fire. And though why today might be a little bit weak before you, it's all good. It's all good. So that's, that's inheritance, right? So inheritance, very, very quickly to recap, is something that's tangible. And most of the time when you think about inheritance, it includes money, property, or heirlooms, rings, jewelry, whatever. And that comes at the end. Yeah. Inheritance number two also is something that you cannot pay for. You can't pay for your inheritance. So I get, eh, don't think I'm picking, but I don't understand uh, the go get your inheritance song. <laughs> get your inheritance. Get it, get it. You can't go get no inheritance. Right? It ain't Mary Mary. It's uh, Donald Lawrence. I can go get your inheritance. You can't go get nothing. You can't, you can't pay for it, right? And the bottom, the third one is something has to die so you can collect your inheritance. In the case that we're talking about, Jesus paid the ultimate price and left us the ultimate inheritance. Y'all follow me on this? Y'all got inheritance? Y'all got it? Okay, I'm going to close like this. Because deep we talked about this and I'm going to close like this so we can know the difference. Look at your neighbor and say, what's the difference between inheritance and a legacy? Now that you've asked me the question, say, now tell me. Tell me the answer. Now tell me the answer. What's the difference? Tell me. Tell me the answer. Theological scholar, did you tell him? Did you get him straight back there? Did you, did you tell the minister, theolog my theological theology, theologian, did you tell him? 
Well, in case you didn't know, and that's why I'm talking about exquisite inheritance, is that there's a considerable difference that exists between an inheritance and a legacy. See, anybody can leave an inheritance. Anybody can leave an inheritance, which is something that you pass on to your family or loved ones. Something that you pass on to your family or loved ones. But an inheritance can also fade. Inheritance, inheritance can also, I like the way y'all looking at me because I'm gonna break it down. Inheritance can lose its value. See, I can, I can leave you a house. I can leave you thousands of dollars, but it's gonna go. Some people blow their inheritance, right? So inheritance is something that I leave to you, but uh, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful because it, it fades. But a legacy is something that you invest in to your family. Yep. Inheritance, something you pass on to. Legacy, something you invest into your family. And, and I'm going to give you the differences and then I'm going to leave it alone. An inheritance is something tangible. Now, I already talked about that. That you give and you leave to others. And it doesn't always have to be at the end uh, of life, because I'm going to show you an example. An inheritance temporarily brings happiness to people. Oh, you know, I guess my parents left me all these thousands of I got a house, and you don't have one. And you can come, come on, man. Show. Come on. You, you got a little something, something, and then you happy about it. An inheritance eventually fades as it's spent and sometimes becomes no more. An inheritance, if you want to talk about tangibles like rings, I had a bad ring, uh, Brother Andrew, when I was a couple, when we got married. I loved, I wore that ring every day. That was my pride and joy. I lost that bad boy. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it, but I don't have it no more. Chill. An inheritance also is your activity, your activity may or may not pay off when you leave somebody an inheritance because they may blow their inheritance. Y'all remember the prodigal son? Yeah. Daddy, give me my inheritance. I want it now. Son, you sure? Yeah, give me, give me all my money. And what did he do? He went out and he blew it. But as he blew it, he had to come back. Because he had to understand the difference between inheritance and legacy. He had to come back to a legacy. Right? So all those things are inheritance. Let me tell you what legacy is and I'm done. A legacy also is something that's tangible, right? And I said inheritance was tangible, something that was tangible and it included valuables. A legacy is something that is tangible but it includes values. Right? A legacy permanently transforms the recipient or the recipients. A legacy lives on long after you're gone. Right? That house is sold now. Somebody else lives there. Right? Uh, your investment with a legacy, here you go, here you go, here you go, dig it in. Your investment and legacy makes an impact, not an impression. So as my mom and daddy left me inheritance, and my sister, we got some money, we got some things, but that money will be gone. That money will be accounted for. But moreover, my mom and daddy left us a legacy. And that legacy simply is this, and I told y'all before. I told y'all, I told y'all the whole story about the whole Burton name. But the legacy of the Burton name, which was dirt, which was mud, 60-some years ago, did my heart good. If y'all follow me on social media, y'all saw the post. If y'all ever saw Spike Lee, was the Spike Lee movie? Do the right thing. And he ends Sal's pizza eating pizza. 
And what did he do? He looked up and he looked on the wall. And what did he say? How come he don't know on the wall? Chill. Did my heart good this past week as I reflected. In terms of legacy, my baby boy sent us a group text. And he was in the locker room at the University of Delaware, and they're doing very well. And he looked up on the wall, and he took a picture, and he sent it to us in the group chat, our family. And he said, this is a, y'all know Zachariah, he's crazy. He said, this is hilarious. And on this wall at the University of Delaware, <coughs> it has, it says, academic all American. And it has a beautiful picture of my baby boy. And it just made me so proud. Because then I started thinking about Frank's on that same wall. As an MVP. As a captain, as a leader. That's never going to go away. And then I really got happy because I started thinking about Dell State. Burton name again is on the wall. It's not going away. So long after I leave, my children's 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 children will see Papa, uncles, and this is our legacy. So today, Dick and Dean, it's not about an inheritance, and again, this is how awesome God is, he does everything well. I didn't know that this might be your last day. I taught you shit at the end of the month. Bro, I still was trying to get myself together. But it's not about gifts. It's not about inheritance. It's not about me giving you something tangible. Pastor Tacey and I have given you the gift of a legacy, bro. When you walk away from Perfect Will Ministries, just like some others, Tom and Shanika, this will always be home. You will always remember when you needed to get that fan, that flame, uh, that fire rekindled, and we started fanning the flame, and we started making the word applicable, applicable, and we started making the word easy, and you started thinking about the sermons by Minister Keisha, and you start thinking about the sermons by uh, Elder Elect Minister Mel, you start thinking about the sermons by Pastor Tacy, and you said, "I got it." That's the legacy that we need to you today. We leave to you a legacy that you can go into any place, and any door, black, white, rich, poor, and begin to speak. And people will gain encouragement and comfort from the words that you speak. That's the legacy that we leave with you, that you will be bold. And that you wouldn't back down. And no matter what you face out there, you will start to reflect on that crazy Deacon Nolan. My brother. I miss his hugs. I miss, I miss his fellowship. I miss the camaraderie with Deacon Herb and all the stuff that he imparted in me about security. Remember, remember, remember your words. Well, y'all sure y'all need a watch, man. I'm not law enforcement. I don't, I don't do things like y'all do. Man, you are a perfect fit, bro. Yeah. Perfect fit. Amen. You start to reflect on, 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 on Kat and Brother Andrew yes. and how the stories that we just sit up and tell after church every Sunday. That's always going to be there. It's just a phone call. It's just a visit. Yo, Cap. Yo, yo, brother Andrew. Yo, D. Yo, D. Yo, bro, 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 bro. Yo, we're going to go to Florida. Let's go to Florida. Let's go and check on my guy. And y'all know, you know, I travel. We travel. We, I got some traveling dudes. I'm looking at everybody. We all travel. All of us will travel. So we leave you with that. And so when I talk about I'm done, exquisite inheritance, exquisite inheritance is really, is really the legacy that you leave behind to your children's children's children. So I challenge you today, perfect way. 
I challenge you today at home. I told you about the legacy that the Apostle Paul left Timothy. I gave you an example about the legacy that we're leaving with our children. What are you leaving with your children? When you're gone, will they just go? Not that you look for your parents to leave you something. But will you be insignificant? Or will you go, or will your kids go, wow, my mama did this, my daddy did that. And it's not even about you really, necessarily. I have, I have two very good friends. One is the city manager of Delaware City, David Beller. He used to be a state police major. And the other, his brother, is Dougie Beller, who is a city policeman in Wilmington. I played baseball with Dougie years ago. And their mama was the very first female warden in Delaware, black female. And the women's prison is named after her. Beller Correctional Institution. That's legacy, y'all. What are you gonna leave your children? Start thinking about, stop going to funerals, talking about the death. What do you want to leave your children? What are you doing right now, today, that will make your children's children proud? That they can always look up on the wall, that they can always look up in the book, that they can always, it don't even have to be that, that they can always look up and say, you know what? My grandma June, man, she was something else. Not only was she a Marine, but she was an Army veteran too. What are you leaving them? Or will somebody just say, I don't know. My dad, my mom, they, they don't know too much. They didn't do nothing. The whole Bible is about legacy. And my message today, exquisite legacy. Exquisite le the legacy is this. Did, did, didn't I tell y'all about the stew? Did I tell y'all about the stew? Yeah. I, I, I might have told it in Bible stuff. I need all y'all to hear this. So in corporate America, Sister Keisha, you know this because we go through all these meetings. Sociology, Darren, psychology has this thing where they call, they, they, they call it the melting pot theory. And so that's when I take all of us all different ages, different backgrounds, sometimes different races, and I put all of us together and we melt together. How beautiful that is. Well, I challenge the University of Delaware team that don't work with championship teams. Because everybody can't be the same. And even here, everybody can't be the same. Minister Keisha is never going to be as loud as I am. Minister Mel is not ever going to be tenacious as Pastor Tacey is. We all have distinct personalities. So I don't ascribe, in this case, to the melting pot theory. But I ascribe to what's called beef stew. Or any kind of stew. So you got your carrots. You got your celery. You got your onion. You got your broth. You got either seafood or chicken or beef, whatever you want. And you put all these ingredients into a pot. And as it begins to simmer, it begins to cook, they, ne they never blend together. But not one ingredient seeks to be preeminent over another. No, I'm more robust. No, I'm more for No. When the time is right in a stew, at the peak of the cooking and its flavor, every single ingredient peaks together. And when you taste a good stew, it's exquisite, y'all. And I told the University of Delaware team, I said, this is an exquisite team, and we're starting to see it. They started to kick it back to me. So I'm asking y'all to be exquisite. I'm asking y'all to all, don't lose your identity, your individuality, but collectively when we come together, that's how we can become champions. Champions how? Champions and defeat the devil. Champions is that nobody is ever left alone. Champions is that no, no matter what, if you feel it down, we come coming to your rescue. Champions is if you know what, I lost somebody, guess what? You're never alone. You got us. 
Champions is, if I need, can you just pray? It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm sorry I called you, but I just need some prayer. No, you don't say wait till the morning or wait till Sunday. Let's pray right now. So I challenge y'all, just like I challenge you, y'all want y'all to be exquisite. And that inheritance really is a legacy. I challenge you to move further than inheritance. I want y'all to build a legacy. So I thank God for you, and you, and even you. But most of all, many God, I'm going to give you your flowers. I absolutely love you. I appreciate the bond that we've built in the last 11 years. I feel sad. I do. I, I do feel sad. Because realistically, and you, we could be all spiritual. Oh, don't, don't say bye. I'm losing a brother, man. I'm, I'm losing somebody that, 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 that I spent and took some time and invested in. And don't get it twisted. I'm not saying it because I want you to stay or whatever. It's just, it, it, it'd be the same when you're a spiritual son of mine. It'd be the same if, when we sent, well, listen, when we send our kids off to college, you just saw her face. It's the same way. We know we're not really losing them, but there's a separation. You don't think we're spiritually. Jesus said, can this cup be passed for me? Daddy, can you move it? Even Jesus did it. So I feel some kind of way. I do. But I know that it is okay. And it's okay because I know that you're going to be okay. And it's okay because I know God going to do. He does all things well. I don't. I heard what you said. I heard you talk about you going off this year last week, but God going to figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm praying for an angel to come down and say, "Boom! Here go the job. Boom! Here go the house. Boom!" Yeah. That's what I'm praying. Yeah. That I'm just I'm selfish. That's my prayer. So let us all stand in Jesus' face. Let's give God a hand raise first. Oh, I'm, I'm telling y'all, I, I promise y'all, if y'all give it to God and just ask him, he will never leave y'all. He will always give you a word instant in season. I didn't know this was happening today. Yeah, yeah, you could have.